and I have an Oh. Uh, okay, so we can go ahead and get started with the grape update then. Okay, this week I was able to turn the board again for the RF grape deck. This is what the board stack looks like. Let's see, get the, right now it's a two board set. The top board has the radio, the uh, filters, and the A to Ds. And then the bottom board is going to be what we're working on now with the Pico and, and a Raspberry Pi because we're still struggling to meet the requirements of the thousand times bandwidth that we were imposed on by trying to do real-time sampling of three channels simultaneously. Um, as I think I've mentioned before, the, the Raspberry Pi cannot handle having to service a reading every 125 microseconds without missing them. We were measuring it at averaging missing about between 30 and 300 samples per second of the 8,000 it was taking. So we're still struggling to try and get that part working. And once we do, I'll get the second board finished. Uh, but the first board I've ordered 75 boards and they should be in in two weeks, but we can't quite build them yet because I'm still short op amps. So I got everything else for the RF deck, which by the way, has a little over 400 parts on it, which is why I separated the two boards. Um, but the initial testing of it, everything looks good uh, and quite happy with where we're at. And hopefully in some certain amount of time, we'll be building these things. So back to net. Oh, Nathaniel's here. Yeah, I am. That sounded great. It sounded. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounded very good, John. Yeah, the shipping. The boards were seventy-five dollars, and the shipping was eighty-five dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I could, I could have ordered a hundred, and it would have made it about equal. But it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds. That sounds good. So, how hard do you think it is going to be to meet that? requirement well we're still trying to jump that hurdle uh bob benedict is on grandkid control this morning so he won't be joining us we think we figured out how to put the usb into a block transfer mode okay and that appears to be a 10 times faster transfer rate so if that's the case we've got it okay that's great so now the bottleneck is getting it from your board to the raspberry pi that's what we're establishing. That's what we're doing right now, trying to figure that out. We've got stuff going, but we're trying to see if we can do a maintain a rate of that data coming in. And once we okay. clear that hurdle, I think we're home free. That will be amazing. It's, that, yeah. It's, that it's sounds like a really times, good progress. It's a thousand times the, the amount of data than I was ever anticipating. So that's what's giving me a headache. Yeah, definitely. So, um, but we're so getting that, there. We keep that, plotting. That sounds, that sounds really good. Um, yeah, that, that sounds promising. How bad is the op amp situation? Uh, I am going to be talking with the marketing person at Analog Devices, hopefully today. I am on the top of the list when they come in. He doesn't know the schedule, but he says things are looking up that the bottlenecks are starting to go away. So I suspect we'll have parts hopefully within the month. That would be really, really good. Keep your fingers crossed. I, oh, I am. <laughs> I've been uh, watching every time you... Uh, you order parts and like all right <laughs> yeah offline we need to talk to salsa because the last couple orders came through with tax on them okay so there's okay. something something's not getting done right so i don't know yeah. if, if digikey lost something or whatever but the last two i saw had tax on them it was you know one was 38 bucks one was 28 bucks so there's that's something we don't want to be paying yeah de definitely so um yeah we'll have to have her work on getting that taken off yeah yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, that's great. Uh, that sounds like a really good progress report, John. Thank you so much for all your hard work on this. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, I, I do have an idea. I can imagine. <laughs> I, I really, really do appreciate it. Hey, two additional questions while we're on the topic of the grape. Uh, one, it may not be appropriate right this week, but at some point I want to get back into thinking about what we might have to ship. Right. Um, I realize we can call a grape a black box for now and that's fine. But um, the reason I'm thinking about that is 
maybe the Hamside Conference, but mainly at Dayton, is going to be a good opportunity to start recruiting people where where these things might want to go. And I don't. And if somebody would ask me, well, what exactly is involved hardware wise, I, I don't want to give them a blank stare. So yeah, I'm actually trying to we, find a, uh, a extruded box so that I can make the bottom board. Because if you look at this board here, you'll notice that the edges have. Uh, can you even see it? There's exposed uh, copper there. It's actually gold plated. That'll slide into the tray of the box and actually make a ground connection to the inside of the box. Now I have a box that I picked that's down in MPJA Jones down in Florida, but I don't know if they have 50 of them. They're 15 bucks a piece. So I'm trying to find something a little smaller and a little bit cheaper. So. Well, again, we we consider that. I mean, just for initial discussions, we can consider that a black box. Right. And then there's cables and an antenna and a power supply. And just to get these items on a list, so we realize people realize it's going to take up half their shack or a, a six by six in square on their operating desk. I mean, we're right. talking orders of magnitude. Probably the biggest thing is whether they have an antenna or not that they can dedicate to this. Right. And I think we would owe them some guidance on what type of antenna. And I realize we're talking about a wide frequency range and all that. So again, maybe we can talk about this in Scranton when we're all together, which would be yeah, fine. It too. goes from five to, we do five, 10 or 15 megahertz, or I don't know about 3.3 yet, but four point or 7.85 and 14.67. Right. So I mean, there's, they, going be, they, there's going to be some issues on when you select a frequency because there's only two PLLs in the S, SI5351 and getting multiples working for the prescaler to that only alerts allows certain energy frequencies. So we're not going to have the luxury of sending it to a kilohertz for each channel. Because like for five, we might get the, that get it at 400 hertz and at 10, we might get it at 800 hertz, you know, something like that. So, hey, say anyway. that one more time, John. The PLLs do not have, I've only got two PLLs in okay. this Azure chip. So, that allows me to create multiples that are integer multiples of each other for two of the channels. Okay. So, for the 4.999 and the 9.999, those are obviously not integer multiples of each other. So, we have to make a multi integer multiples, which means where that ends up in the spectrum moves from a kilohertz to somewhere between 500 hertz and 1500 hertz. So we have to play some numbers games. Okay. Doing WWV, I haven't figured out yet if we can even do CHU at the same time. Okay. We have to do all, we, we haven't played the numbers game yet. It's, it's a complicated mess. Yeah. Okay. But we're working on that as well. Hmm. It's called get in a spreadsheet and start getting creative. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay, the least second more. thing is is an ask of Nathaniel. I think at one point you said that uh, you were waiting to get access to your files again, so you could send me the list of uh, lat lawns for the potential grape sites that was from I think it was the Cedar Grant that had the stars on the map. Oh yes, I have access to those files again now. Yeah, if you could just send that to me, I'd like to. I'm just trying to think ahead again to the conference and stuff to be prepared on things you might want to be able to talk about. I see the biggest challenge for you, Gary, is figuring out who's getting them. It's yep, not so I, once we get that, the logistics should be doable, but figuring out where we send them to get the distribution that Nathaniel wants or coverage is going to be the hard part. Right. Well, we're starting to ramp up the publicity machine. We had our first article published today in the, in the, the CW Ops Journal. So uh, who knows? But I mean, that's why I'm trying to start early. A smart move. That's not a not a trivial task. I agree. All right, okay, I will that's get that it for me, you. Rachel. Gary. Yes. Uh, W1XP. I've got a second location that I can volunteer. I don't know if it's any near any of the stars, but it's uh, coastal North Carolina, just north of Wilmington. Well, I'd rather have more locations than not enough, um, because it, it, yeah. uh, we're, we're you know we're shooting for thirty units. We may end up with forty. We may be able to who knows what. So I yeah. I, I, I definitely just, like to know about that. Yeah, I'm uh, still shooting for fifty. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the coordinates. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah more... I, will, I will get you those coordinates, Gary. And Rachel, um. If you could add to the agenda, I have the uh, tentative Hamside workshop agenda that I'd like to discuss this morning. 
And I sent David an email last night saying that I'd like to figure out uh, where to put his talks in and or presentations. So we can do that whenever you are ready. We could probably do that now because that coincides with the coherent CW progress, perhaps. Wonderful. All right. I will put, uh, if you go to hamside.org, I now actually have the uh, agenda linked on the uh, meeting page. So, so if you go here and you go to the meeting page, you scroll down, click here for workshop agenda. Here's the agenda. This is a tentative agenda. It's subject to change, which we will be changing it now. Um, I can also put this link in the chat. There we go. Oh. It's also in the chat. So I will walk everyone through it. Um, so the official meeting start date is uh, Friday, March 17th. Uh, we have breakfast and uh, registration starting at 7 a.m. local time with our opening remarks starting at 8.15 a.m. So it's going to be a bright and early morning. Mm -hmm. um, yes. This is the same agenda, same schedule that we had last year too. It, it seemed to work pretty well. The actual talks start at 8.30 a.m. We're going to get an update from uh, Tangerine SDR. So Tom McDermott will be there in person to do that. Uh, John, you are up next with the uh, great version two hardware description. Um, then we're gonna have Bill Engelke, uh, his students talking about the personal space weather station central control system. Um, David McGaw is going to talk about his AM Doppler system over there. Um, and then we are going to have uh, Jonathan Rizzo talk about the observations with the VLF system he has installed over at my house. Then we have the most important part of the day, coffee break. Um, then we go on to session two, uh, ionospheric modeling and traveling ionospheric disturbances. We have a virtual talk from Argentina. Uh, where they're going to be doing um, ray tracing uh, for HF radars. So I actually tried to get um, either her or her student to come in person, but unfortunately she's too busy to travel. She has a visa, but it's too busy to travel. And her student um, could come, but doesn't have a visa. So we're going to, I, um, their group seems uh, pretty good and with it and interested. So I think I'm going to try to keep talking with them and see if we can get them to come to next year's HAMSI workshop in person. Um, then Veronica will talk about observations of um, ionospheric variability and uh, TIDs with the grape one. Um, Diego will talk about uh, LSTIDs observed with RB and Whisper PSK reporter. Bill Engelke will talk about the LSTID automated analysis he has for uh, determining the bottom edge there. Uh, my student, Francis Talley, is going to talk about the new web interface to the uh, SuperDarn analysis, SuperDarn MSTID analysis toolkit that we have over here. And I'm going to give a talk on, um, this is a stand-in title right now, but I have a 12-year climatology of MSTIDs observed with SuperDarn radars. It's from another project I'm working on. Um, then we have lunch. Then we have the uh, oral session three festivals of of Eclipse on Spheric Science. Uh, Gareth uh, from NGIT will lead us off with uh, scientific questions that can be addressed by the Eclipse. Rachel Bodeker, you are up after him. I changed the title of your uh, talk from what you submitted on the abstract. I just made it exactly the same thing as the title of the proposal. So basically your job is just to explain what's going on in the proposal. Cool. Great. Um, Gary, you are doing, you're up after Rachel, engaging the amateur radio community with festivals of Eclipse Ionospheric Science. And uh, we have Nick Hall Patch. He's going to be patched in virtually from Canada. And he's going to talk about using um, medium wave AM um, for the Eclipse. Then we have Gwyn Griffiths coming in virtually from the UK. He'll be talking about um, identifying 14 megahertz propagation modes using FST4W, SNR, and spectral spread. And the reason this is in the eclipse session is because we're hoping this might also be something that can be brought to bear on the eclipse. And to help out with that, we have Rob Robinette, who will be in person 
um, talking about uh, uh, how deploying uh, frequency stabilized amateur radio transmitters for doing this FST 4W. So I think this is kind of cool. This would be our first foray into uh, frequency stabilized transmitters in this group, as far as I know. Um, then we have the next most important thing of the day, the coffee break with snacks, which I think will be cookies at 3.30 p.m. Then we have our oral session four. We have uh, Project HALO, which is meteorological observations of the total solar eclipse. That's going to be in person from a, a student team at Millersville University. Um, and they will be, so I, I think Jerry Krieger met uh, him over at the AMS meeting uh, back in January. Then uh, we have Christina. She is going to talk about um, observing solar flare effects with the grapes. And then Shibaji from Virginia Tech is going to talk about um, now casting solar flare uh, radio blackouts using SuperDarn. Uh, my student Shaf is going to talk about his uh, senior project using um, radio astronomy data to look at to measure the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, he's using data that came from um, someone who presented at HAMSA a couple of years ago, Rich Russell, and he's working closely with Mary Lou West on this project. We have Vince Ledvina, who is now a grad student, a PhD student at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, talking about his North Dakota dual overall camera uh, system. And then uh, Jim LaBelle, uh, I'm not sure if he's gonna be in person or if he's going to be uh, virtual, but he's doing observing auroral radio emissions in the conjugate hemispheres. I've got closing remarks at 5.50 p.m. Then we all walk next door to the banquet at the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel. And uh, Dr. Pat Reif, W5TAR, will give the keynote, Forging Amateur Professional Bonds um, over at the uh, banquet. So what do you think for day one? A lot of good stuff. Pretty packed schedule, but that's perfect. Yeah, I, I think it's good. Do we have enough coffee in there? <laughs> we need more bio breaks. <laughs> more bio breaks, yeah. So, that's true. Fortunately, the meeting room is very close to the restroom, so you can just sneak out the back and you can go go to the restroom there. Um, so Saturday, um, we start off with oral presentations in the morning. Uh, we have a little bit of a later start Saturday morning. So if you have a little too much fun at the banquet, you can sleep in a little bit with our first um, with our first real talk starting at 9 a.m. And that's gonna be from Joe Huba uh, talking about modeling the atmosphere with SAMI 3. And it's been nice, um, Rachel uh, on this call, my other uh, grad student here, Devin, um, they've been meeting with Joe on a weekly basis on Zoom on Mondays. So they've already started working with him on things. And then we have Jesse Alexander from the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. Uh, he's running a program called the Ham Radio Project Exploring the Electromagnetic Spectrum. And if you are at Tapper DCC, you'll know that this is actually a project to um, bring in more underrepresented groups into amateur radio. And uh, I think it's a really neat program. And um, he's been meeting with his students, uh, I think like twice a week. So I actually gave a talk to them last night over Zoom about the eclipse activities. And we're going to have, I think, at least four of his students coming in person to the ham radio workshop. Um, then we have a coffee break. And then we have one more oral session on uh, Saturday. Uh, we have a team of people there. NASA had a space apps hackathon challenge where they challenged people all around the world to try and do something with amateur radio data. So we have one of the winning teams coming to give their talk. Uh, it's called Evaluation of Global Ionospheric TEC Using Simultaneous Observations for Amateur Radio Networks, the International Space Station, and the any quick G model for space weather prediction. So I know for certain Matt Downs and Marcin Lesnowski are coming. Um, Matt's from the UK and uh, Marcin's from Poland. So they will, they're planning on being here in person. Uh, Gamel is trying to get here in person, but he's still working on his visa issue. So we'll see if we, we can actually get him in the country or not. Um, Mike Hartinger, who is uh, now going to be Christina's postdoctoral advisor, he'll be giving a virtual talk on listening to the heliosphere, making space data audible for citizen science. 
Then we have uh, Bob Reif um, is going to be talking about campsite, a great idea, but not a new one. I think his talk's really neat because um, he was actually a high school student in 1957 and 58. And he was um, an amateur radio operator when he joined the ARRL Propagation Research Project, which was a project supported by the Air Force and collected information on atmospheric VHF radio propagation uh, by reports from radio amateurs. So it's going to be really nice to hear about his firsthand experiences with that. Um, then we have, uh, whoops, where, are I, where am I? Uh, then we have uh, Ron Wilcox. He's going to talk about the history and art of DX and contesting. So it's a little bit more of a general interest over here. Then we have lunch on Saturday. And then everything Saturday afternoon is supposed to be a little bit more like hands on and not just sitting in your chair doing orals. So we're going to, uh, there will be a VE session um, all of Saturday afternoon. We're also going to have a special event station running here. Uh, the university is letting us put temporary antennas up on the roof. So we should actually have a good dipole up about, um, you know, on top of the five story building. So we'll have both of those things going um, all Saturday afternoon. Uh, we will have the poster and demo session. And so this is really where, um, you know, we're able to put in uh, just a, a lot of other things that couldn't fit into the orals or, um, you know, things like that. So we've got Jonathan giving a couple posters and a demo on the VLF system. Uh, Steve Sirwin, unfortunately, can't make it in person, but he said that he will uh, give us a nice poster on his TDOA plans for the eclipse. Uh, Human's going to, and his team, they're going to do a demo of what they're doing on the ground magnetometer uh, data portal. Uh, we have an undergrad student from Wilkes University talking about temperature modeling uh, and control on a multi-core system on a chip. Um, Ron's giving a poster on involving a citizen, layperson citizen science. We've got geographic maps for science and amateur radio. I have to make sure David is happy doing this as a poster, so hopefully he will be. Uh, Jason Dare, who I see is on the call here. Say hi, Jason. I see he's on the call. So he'll be, he's a uh, postdoc from uh, Rice University. He's talking about some magnetospheric work that he's doing, field line potential drops and ionospheric streamers. Um, Rachel Frizzell is going to be talking about her um, work looking at the open closed boundary using magnetometers in Antarctica. Uh, we have a presentation about the IEEE student chapter here at the University of Scranton, a demo from Jonathan Rizzo as well. We're going to, there's still room to add more posters. I'm planning on putting in a lot of University of Scranton student posters in this as well, and some other like faculty posters, even if they're not entirely tied into amateur radio. So, um, you know, this is a message for Case Western again, and for other people on the group. If you want to still present something that maybe doesn't fit into an oral, I'll be happy to add you as a poster. Uh, the other thing, if you do have an oral, I'm also happy to have you also submit a poster version because I'm planning on having the posters up the entire time. So that basically as people are walking through the hallways, um, you know, during coffee breaks and something like that, you have things that you can go talk about and look at. So it doesn't all just have to be during the um, oral session. So then Saturday afternoon, we're doing something a little bit different than we've done last year. And this is where I'm looking at putting in um, the Case Western uh, present workshops that David sent me last night or a couple of days ago. Um, so we're at two o'clock. So we'll have like, um, we'll have say like a, a half hour lunch and like a half hour where it's strictly just posters and VE session and stuff like that. And then two o'clock, we're going to start these uh, workshops. So it'll be normally an hour long. So Ed Hare from the ARRL uh, labs, he's the head of the ARRL labs. He's going to come and he'll do a, a workshop on using propagation analysis uh, software for antenna modeling to select the antenna for digital receive and transmit sites. And then in parallel to that, we'll have Case Western do um, one of their uh, one of their um, workshops, uh, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Uh, then at two, I think at two thirty, we're going to have some of these guided tours. So the idea here is that um, you people can either stay for the whole hour here, or if they decide that they've gotten what they need out of this after the first half hour, they can duck out and do a guided tour. Uh, we have the 
exhibit called Amateur Radio Through the Ages, which is this display of old, you know, kind of boat anchor sort of equipment from the last 100 years that um, the Murgos Amateur Radio Club and um, Bill Gallagher and Tom Maka have set up at the university here. So Bill will walk people through the history of this exhibit so you can go take a look at that. Um, I'm also going to give a tour of the um, of where the new amateur radio station at Scranton is going to be. We'll also show you what the freshman students are doing with the micro mice here at the University of Scranton. Uh, then we'll have coffee break with snacks at 3 p.m. Then we'll have another uh, workshop, hour long workshop session. We'll have the other case um, workshop. And then we also have a professor from Wilkes University down the road, who's also a member of Murgos ARC, talking about computing networking and the M17 amateur radio digital protocol. Um, then we'll do a repeat of the guided tours at 4 p.m. And then 4.30 p.m. we'll have workshop session three. We'll have Ed Hare repeat his um, workshop for people who didn't get to see it. And then um, Aiden, I want, I'm hoping Aiden's on one of these calls soon because um, he had submitted this as an oral presentation, but I was wondering if we could convince him to do like a workshop sort of thing instead of just a normal oral presentation. So I want to talk to Aiden about that. And then we'll have a closing dinner on campus um, on the nice room that overlooks the universe, that overlooks the town of Scranton. And then Sunday morning, um, 9 a.m., we'll have a visit to the Steamtown National Historic Site in the Trolley Museum. So this is um, um, anyone who wants to do this, just you head down to this particular site. The museums are in both in the same parking lot. Uh, maybe I can see if I can get the um, get some sort of a shuttle service from the hotel over there. Uh, the Steamtown Museum is free. The Trolley Museum has a small charge, about seven dollars per person. There, there is some bad news here. The um, heating system at Steamtown uh, broke this year and it broke in such a way that they think it's going to take three years to repair it, which is like dreadful. Um, so the inside museums at Steamtown, inside exhibits are closed. However, the roundhouse, the rail yard and the grounds remain open. So bring your jacket, you'll be able to go and actually see the trains in the roundhouse and then after we see that, we'll go over to the Trolley Museum, which is on the other side of the parking lot, and that is open, and that is a really nice museum, too. It's got, um, and they have really good indoor exhibits, and so that'll be the uh, closeout of the workshop. So what do you think? Wow, you definitely get your money's worth coming to this one. <laughs> we're, we're trying. So in a minute, we'll go and I'll go into talking to David and the case crew about where to put their uh, workshops. But um, any general comments about the flow or the program? Is or it questions? fine if I say my favorite part is the banquet? Absolutely. And Dylan, I know we still have to put you on this list too. So I, I do have to, I'm actually supposed to talk to Neil tonight. So at, we'll definitely put you down for, um, a poster uh, or a presentation for Yoda, and I'll talk to talk to Neil and you about how we're going to set that up with like the TV or whatever. And you know, we'll still see what we can do with uh, Scotty and the uh, boxes. But I I haven't forgotten you, even though you're not on here yet. No, that's yeah, that's I wasn't worried about that. So thank you yeah. though. Um, and then the for the case, I mm -hmm. I can make that file pretty quickly so long as I have the correct measurements and all of that Great. Uh, and then the the main issue is actually getting it made whether it's metal or 3d printed so, yeah well I, I think, I think it's, I might, so, yeah go ahead uh, I was just going to say that the 3d printed one might not be as big of an issue since we can do that ourselves yes but uh myself included if I get my 3D printer going in okay. time. But uh, the metal one, I'm not really too sure about that one. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, I think for this workshop, the 3D printed version is just fine. I would not stress out about the metal one for now. Um, just try to do the, if we can get the 3D printed version for this workshop, that'll be awesome. And I don't know, John, did you want, 
Dylan's in the business of making 3D printed cases. Um, is that something you would like to avail yourself for the grape? Unless you can print in metal. Um, well, he's willing to do the. Are, there are uh, ways of printing uh, in metal. It's yeah. expensive, but you can do it. Yeah, my done son does it with copper. They center it with a laser. I've seen it done. Um, we'll have to talk. Um, like I say, I'm looking for a cheap extruded box, and I've got Aiden actually offered to help me on that. So depending on where that goes, I'll let you know. Yeah, if, sounds good. I see Steve. I don't know the dimensions yet because the board stack right now is basically that tall. But I have to now have to just have this stick onto a Raspberry Pi 4. So it's going to be a triple stack. And I might have to put the fan in the bottom board to cool the board below it. So that's still got some work to do. Yeah. I see Steve Kepler jumped in here. Hey, Steve. Hi, Nathaniel. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've been better. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, no, my father passed away last week, oh, so I was at the funeral uh, the last couple of days. I'm so really sorry. Funeral. Yeah, so um, so we're kind of today's my first day kind of back in the office. I was in the Milwaukee area uh, the last couple of days. Yeah, I, I know you mentioned he wasn't doing well. I, I know that's really, really difficult. Well, thank you. Yeah, so if I might have missed uh, some kind of <laughs> a deadline for a ham side, by the way, too. I see the um, schedule up here. Yeah, well, you're so signed I, up for everything. Oh, good. Okay. I mean, I'm still taking um, I'm still definitely taking spots for posters. So if you want to submit a uh, a poster, and then also if there's still some chance that you know if some oral presentation presenter drops out for some reason, the poster might get promoted to an oral. <laughs> um, I could definitely do a poster if you don't mind me recycling my AGU poster. I could do that. We would love to have that. Okay. Well, let's just do that then. Okay. <laughs> I could yeah. send you something something sooner rather than later. Yes. Yes. Uh, please do that. I mean, I'm recycling. We're recycling some AGU posters in here anyway. So I it's going to be a different audience. So yes, we'd love to have your post, your AGU poster. We'd love to have you come come to the workshop. Well, I definitely think there could be some uh, virtual participation. Um, yeah. Anyways, I don't want to hold up the meeting here. I'm curious how the great how the latest grape thing is uh, is is evolving. Uh, John, John Gibbons, oh he disappeared. Um, it's evolving. John gave a report on it this morning. Um, he showed us two prototype boards. Um, he's got one data transfer hurdle to overcome, and he is um, he's also waiting on some op amp parts, but. It's looking like it's uh, moving along. So, so what it, what was the solution for the? Um, it sounds like you're able to pipe everything then through uh, like a Pico or something, or is that? That's that's what we have to. John can answer that. Okay. Yeah, maybe after he gets back from the bathroom or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, why don't we go on? Let's I let's get um the. Let's get David's uh, David Kasdan's email up on the screen here about these uh, posts. So these are the so you've got four. Well, three really. Three, okay. Unless you talk with Madeline. Unless I talk, I have not talked with Madeline. Um. All right, I I will have to go meet myself, meet Madeline. Meet I'm not Madeline. I, I think she's into it, but. Um, she she doesn't correspond a lot, so at least invite her to the social sessions. Yes, and see see if she'll present that paper. Who knows? That sounds great. Um, okay, so I so my homework is to go meet Madeline. And uh, your reference there, if you want to scribble it down, is a Kipling short story titled "Wireless" from 1905. Okay, Rudyard Kipling. Yeah, and she knows about it. Okay, that sounds great. It's her area of scholarship. So that's why I thought she might be interested in the whole thing. That's really good. And, um, you know, Scranton being a Jesuit liberal arts university is all into this interdisciplinary sort of uh, ideas. So that, that would work out really nicely. Um, yeah, so I, I will try and I will try to go find her. She's down and, the street uh, from you. Yeah, she's over. 
like a you know, couple buildings that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <clears throat> that way. Um, so then it looks like um, I have a, I already have a spot for this one in the program. I already have a spot for this one. Did you, are you happy with the spots for those two? Yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, and then do you want me, I can put this last one um, in the third workshop spot as yet another uh, workshop option over there. Yes, I think that would be good. Okay. It will also require some tabletop space and power. The okay. coherent CW one needs some view of the sky through a window or something for GPS receivers. Yeah, so I, what I'm going to try and do is we have a couple of classrooms um, on the second and third story of this building, um, which I think would I'd basically give make that the case Western classroom for the afternoon. Um, they they do have windows that look out to the sky and have a clear view of the sky. The uh, windows do not open though. So I might try, I might task my student Gerard with trying to figure out if he can get an adequate uh, GPS lock with like a, we have a, a Leo Bonner GPS DO. I could see if he can set that up in the room. Yeah, we've had remarkably good luck. So if you can give it a try, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah preferable so. direction is south. North is the worst direction. And as long as they're not plated with a thin metal film for the low E glass, you should be fine. Yeah, well, like the low energy glass. Well, that's the thing. This is one of these fancy lead certified buildings. Oh, okay. you know, give it a try and see what yeah, happens. Right. But there isn't really anything else to say. There, there, there are some other, the, the building is connected to, so there's, a, I'm in the new part of the building. That's where the majority of this conference is going to be. There is an old part of the building which is um, which is in the same kind of in the same building. They're attached. There are classrooms there that do have windows that uh, open. And um, I, I think that the biggest problem with those classrooms is they're going to be a little far away from the workshop. So it's going to be we I think it'll be better for the GPSDO situation, but you're going to have a little harder time. Right. Nathan, Nathaniel, it, it doesn't take much here. Okay. So okay. If you could check to see if you get any satellites at all, that's really that, that's all you need for the moment. That's great. We will we will give that a try. Good, thank so, you. I, I think um, that would be if that classroom will work. That'll be the the best one. Good. The um, FL Digi demo actually could take place in a noisy spot. That's one that might attract passers by. So it might be fun if you set it up in the area where you have coffee pots. If you want, so. Um, yeah, we do have, I have more of a demo room. So if you want me to set this up as just like, uh, as an afternoon demo, do you want a particular time for it? Because with these demos, I kind of just have them running all afternoon. I think that's fine. Uh, I don't think it will hold anyone's attention for more than about 10 minutes at a time. And if we can encourage people to install FL Digi on their own laptops and bring them by, that would help. That sounds um that sounds really good. I I think that makes a lot of sense then. So here's what I will do. I will, yeah, because I do have a room that basically is exactly what you describe. And I'm putting and that and that would be in a much higher traffic area. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um having a bit of acoustic noise and a bit of acoustic reflection actually will help this. Well, okay. So that that sounds really good. And you don't need GPS for the um FL Correct. Digi, right? Correct. Okay. So let me so I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a row here. I'm gonna call your that one demo zero two. And I'm going to Through a channel. Name it what you wish. Uh, I'm just, I just like the capitalization. Through a channel dispersively with fine business copy. It'll be David's second PhD defense. <laughs> Third, fourth, 
Yeah, there there are those people who just like to go collecting PhDs, aren't there? <laughs> it's like a hobby. Um, all right, so this is. Yeah, I moved on to ham radio. <laughs> you moved on to ham radio, so we're going to say. It turns out that's more expensive. <laughs> so this will be Christina Collins, Katie Eight, OXT, Rachel Bodeker, A D eight X A C eight. I will get this eventually, Rachel. A C eight X Y. Yeah, like A C current X Y plane. It's very okay. appropriate. And then eighty eight Y. And then we say Case Amateur Radio Club W8EDU, like that. Rachel, is that how you want it listed? I feel like you should definitely be higher up that list than I am. No, that's all right. No, mm -hmm, no, that's all right. Oh, but, is that how you want the, but Rachel, is that how you want the institutional affiliation listed? Um. Unless there's like a formal element of case or like a case. Do you, want a, do you want the university or do you want the radio club is what it amounts to. Uh, so why don't we have, you know, I have the university represented on some other talks. Yeah. All, all the other talks I have the university represented. So maybe Good. for this one, you have the radio club. That's fine. Right? Thank you then. Okay. okay. That way, that way you get both then. That's good. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And then, so then I'm going to, I will. Delete this one. Good. And then I will dispersively. I guess you add that to the dictionary. And then I will go create a slot for this over here. So that's going to be, it was Christina Holland. Um, what was the? Uh, Rachel Bodeker, David Kesson. Mm -hmm. Rachel Boe. Mm -hmm. David has then. All right. So an abstract we're going to put in here. I will paste that into the abstract and then I just fill in this stuff over here and then done this a few times have we no not at all <laughs> All right, and then I link that, and then then that demo is now set. All right, so that one is there. I will get a room assigned to you. All right, so the next one is the we got that taken care of. Okay, the next one is hey Rachel, how are you? What's up? Um, I talked to David and Bridget and uh, Marianne for a while. Um, David will likely be able to give the opening remarks. Great. Um, I'm going to send him a schedule. Um, I got the phone number from Lisa. I'm going to send that to uh, Carol. I told Dave. I said, yeah, um, my name wasn't on this, but I said, here's the um, budget breakdown. So if you're very familiar with. Um, that's okay. Um, yeah, so that looks great, Rachel. Great. Sorry. Awesome. No, no problem at all. You want to say hi to the group? Hi, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the, um, the Hayes Family Science Competition. And um, we're trying, right now I have 14 schools um, who've committed. My goal is 20. So I was just talking to the dean, um, asking him to give the opening remarks and um, working on some of the planning and logistics. So cool. it's, been, um, it's been good. It should be fun. That, that sounds like fun. <laughs> We, we believe that the couple that plans major academic events together stays together. No, we, we were we were kind of smart. 
Um, Nathaniel's is in March. Mine is in April. We have one month in between. So mine's April 20th. His is March, what, 17th and 18th. Perfect. That's totally insane, yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, guys, for jumping in. I'll let everyone go. Have a great day. Take care, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. All right. So Claude Shannon CW, Coherent CW, uh, Claude Shannon Tempest on a tabletop. Okay. Andrew Yust, does he have a call sign? Yes, okay. um, but I will have to look it up. So okay. continue. If you look up the call sign, do you want this one to be Case uh, Amateur Radio Club or do you want this one to be the university? Uh, call that one the radio club. We've okay. got a lot of people involved. Great. Case amateur radio club w8edu all right so then we're going to do this thing again where i go add publication we're going to do conference proceedings all right so andre do i add anyone else to the co-author list here you should probably oh. be on it right I've got a lot of people. Why don't you just say et al. Okay. And we'll have a handout there. I do have Andre's call sign. If you send me, if you email me the list, I, I can add them all. All right. So, you have Andre's call sign now? Yes. Okay. Zulu Echo 8, Victor Zulu Foxtrot. Good. Great. Okay. And then the abstract is going to be. Um, Experience CW as a GPS synchronized digital mode. Legal on 80, 40, 15 for technicians and excellent for everyone. Wonderful. Full text. Okay. And Great. So then we want to just add, let's save that one in there. So we'll get you a class. We're going to get you a classroom for that one with um, a window that gives you access to GPS satellite. Good. If you have a long table or something separated for the stations to, to be on, that would help. Okay. I think these, I think these rooms, they do have long tables in them. Good. Yeah, I, I think the room that the room I'm thinking of, provided we can get the GPS signal, I think you'll be very happy with. All right. Um, lecture lines and transmission line stubs. Uh, do you want this to be in another hour long sort of thing where you get a classroom, or do you want it to be one of these little demos in the demo room? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I'll vote for a scheduled one hour. A scheduled one hour. Okay, great. So I'm going to put that one where the other one was, which is so that one can go at say 2 p.m. All right. Okay. I know that having all of these things in parallel is not perfect, but it's fine. I'm not sure of a better way to uh, do this. No, it's it's big conference approach. Yeah. Does Adam Goodman have a call sign? Yes, Whiskey Seven, Oscar mm -hmm. Kilo Echo. Okay. Um, and then, is this Case Amateur Radio Club or is it the University? The club. Club. Great. Okay, and then we're going to hit this button here, and we will get conference proceedings. 
Electric lines and transmission. One of the goals for a Saturday afternoon is to make it, give it like a broad appeal to newbies, technical people, people who are interested, you know, just in engineering in general, just really kind of broad appeal on Saturday. Friday is supposed to be more of the, um, this is like, the Friday is supposed to feel more like a regular scientific oral presentation conference, so. Okay, and then, um, and then I guess once again, there's probably a lot of people involved in this. Uh, Adam will, well, it'll be the bunch of us from the club, but yeah. So as I said, if you want to send me a, oh, in that sense, no, this one's Adam's show. This one. So is Adam the only author? Yes. Okay. Okay. Full text. Oh, sure. And then with that, I think I have all of yours programmed. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else on here think they are going to submit a poster or a demo or something like that? Question on the posters, the format. I remember last year there was some sort of online, well, whatever. Yes. I mean, so if you are doing a poster, um, I can send you a poster template. Um, and if you are doing a talk, I have talk templates as well. So the poster template um, is, it's a single PowerPoint slide. Um, say meetings, AMSET workshop. Um, presentation templates. The other one got two versions of it. Nathaniel, um, my students, uh, Anderson and Nicholas Muscolino, already have a poster done, uh, and it's beautiful. It won first prize in engineering department. This Great, they, they don't they don't need to change it. I was, I, it'd probably be better if they leave it like it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. So if you want, so should I take, should I also add them to the poster session? They can, yeah. I mean, they can do both. They're okay. prepared to do both. Great. So I will add. So, oh, and you told me to add um, Nicholas Muscolino to here also, yeah, right? They're, they're both going to do them both. I mean, they're going to work, they're just working together on it. Okay, great. M-U-S-C-O, Muscolino. Muscolino. Perfect. Great. So I will, let me add them in. Because I, I actually do like having both um, posters and uh, talks. Yeah, and we're going to, what we're planning to have um, a laptop available so people can sign up on the fly uh, for uh, central control system accounts. Right. So yeah. I'll have to make sure that you guys have a table with a laptop. I might call yours a demo then. Sure. Yeah. Poster slash demo. Nathaniel. Yeah. I have to go to class. I don't, okay. since I'm the one who hit record, I don't know what will happen when I close out um, of Zoom. I it'll just, I should record. revert the, so the recording goes, did you record to the cloud? I assume. Um, let's see. 
I think you're recording to the cloud, so. I can just leave then and it won't yeah. cause any problem. Yep, you're recording to the cloud, yes. So you can just head out and it'll all be okay. Thank you, Rachel. Good luck. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make sure that we have a, a table for the laptop and a stand for your your poster, your student's poster, Bill. Perfect, thank you. Great. And yeah, you are, no one is required to use the templates. The templates are there just as a courtesy for people who want to use them. So, um, I go down to Okay. Sounds good. That's great. And Jason, is your uh um is your microphone working now? Yeah, it works. Uh I think it worked before I just clicked the wrong thing and thought sure. I was talking. So, yes. So yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jason Durr. I'm from Rice University. I just recently got an amateur radio license under the guidance of uh, Dr. Reif, Patricia Reif, who I assume many of you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to be presenting on ionospheric streamers, which is I'm still curious uh, how much work there is in the field on how ionospheric streamers modify radio propagation. Is anyone knowledgeable about that at all? Or even knowing one reference would be nice. I'm not sure, have you, um, have you done any searches for ionospheric streamers and uh, SuperDarn? Uh, yeah, so there is, there is some work using SuperDarn for sure. Okay, yeah. well there's, Super darn um, works very similarly to HF amateur radio. So you can start building up some links that way. Okay, yeah, just build some intuition. Okay, yeah, good idea. Well, I think we're at 10 o'clock now. So um, if anyone has any, please um, take a look at the uh, agenda, send me comments or corrections, and um, I'll see everyone on this afternoon's telecom. Nathaniel, may I change the subject? Sure. Okay, I, I came in late. Sorry, we're dealing with a bunch of snow here. But um, uh, I have a, a running grape system when I'm not using the antennas for something else. Mm -hmm. And I uh, have a Max 10 development board. Is there any way I can uh, help out with uh, the new version of the grape uh, and so forth, or do I just continue uh, cranking out data with the, uh, the grape that I have? I think for the moment, continue uh, cranking out data uh, with the grape that you have. And then you should also send Gary AF8A over here, your location, so he can consider you. Um, we're gonna be distributing a number of grape twos when they're ready. Um, so if you're in a location that we need, um, you're going to be uh, top on the list for getting one of the new pieces of hardware. Okay, I'm while well, I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona, Northern I think, Arizona. I think that probably is a location we need. In fact, you're probably already represented on the map. Okay, well, let me know uh, W7LUX, and so, uh, willing to figure, help out any way I can. Yeah. So Gary, can you make a note of that? W7LUX is a He's a top contender for a grape two. Okay, and, yep, we got it. And in terms of the Max 10 FPGA development board, um, a lot of that is gonna depend on um, the progress that Tom McDermott's making at the Monday night meeting. And um, I we have to look for his guidance 
in terms of when it makes sense for um, other people to have access to these things. Well, a problem I have is he mentioned the CentOS operating system, and I'm a Linux Mint only. Yeah. So I don't know if that would be, it appears as though that's not really compatible. Well, let me right. know. I'm here uh, okay. and I, I could squeeze out a little bit of time for uh, uh, to help out wherever I can, uh, Nathaniel. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Jeff. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Just let me know what I can do. W7LUX. Right. Thanks. All right, everyone. Um, have a great day and I'll see you this can afternoon. I, can I hang on to ask uh, John if he's still on about the grape two stuff just for a little bit? I mean, people oh, can yeah, go you if can they hang want. On. I think what I'll do is I'm going to stop the recording because um, Veronica just came here and I'm working with her on her data set. So okay, so you, okay. you can chat with John as much as you like. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nathaniel. You're welcome. Anyone else who wants to stay on, you're, you're welcome to stay on too. So I'll, I'll just make one of you the hosts. So, 73 all. 73.